Aries 10, a man teaching new forms to old symbols. All life is symbolic, in a way. The experiences we have are a unique take on something more universal. Um, there is no ability to share exactly any, any two experiences. So whatever we've been taught from the past, um, the symbol of love or the symbol of truth or the symbol of forgiveness or, or, or exchange, or all of these ideas are symbols that represent reality in some way or another. And the way in which these symbols are interpreted and um, assimilated in, into your sense of what is real, um, that changes, that evolves over time. And th this particular degree is telling us, really, that we have to rework everything, everything, always. Not only on, on the, the level of philosophy and spirituality, that the, the teachings that have been inherent within our society and our history and our mythology even, these teachings need to be updated. They need to be uh, brought into today's language, into today's context of society. The, um, the essential mystery within all, of, within all of these things is not corrupted, uh, ever. It, it cannot be corrupted, but most certainly it's interpreted differently by every generation and by every individual. So what's happening in this particular degree is where we're being told to have another look at what you have always considered to be true. Have another look. Maybe it was important for you to see it that way at the beginning and for a while. Is it still important for you? Let's give you an obvious example with the, the child who believes in Santa Claus. If you want to teach a child the principle of generosity and kindness, what better than to invent, invent uh, Santa Claus? It stands for that principle. And then you have to tell the child, well, Santa isn't real, it doesn't exist. And yet later, when the child gets to be an adult and, and have some sense of what an archetype is, then you can say, well, actually, yes, Santa Claus does exist, but in a different form from how a child sees it. Santa Claus is not a rather rotund man dressed in red and then with a white beard. Santa Claus is, is an archetype, the archetype of generosity and kindness, and it does exist. It's just not embodied. But you can't teach of archetypes to people that just don't understand them, like young children. You can't teach that. Nevertheless, it's true and real. And to say that Santa Claus does not exist is, is no more true than to say Santa Claus does exist. But you just have to interpret it in a certain way so that you can get the, the truth in it. Now, this is true of everything. All of your experiences of, of life, you know, if you think about what was it like when you first fell in love or what was it like when you first had your separation or, or got sacked from work or you, you had these emotions at the time and, and that experience was awful, terrible. I wouldn't want to go through that again. But now, later, looking back, you, you may come to the understanding that, that what you thought was going on that wasn't going on. That's not what it was. What was going on was that you were outgrowing yourself. You'd, you'd taken on your situation as though it was a, a suit of clothes. And when you'd outgrown that suit of clothes, something had to change. Now, it could be that you weren't aware of the need for change, and it seemed like change was thrust upon you. So you were given a relationship, or you were sacked from your work, or something happened to you that you didn't initiate. But a part of you did initiate it. This is the, the deepest esoteric teaching there is, that everything we have is of our own making. 
That's counterintuitive. Not many people can believe that. But there's a rider to this, uh, a, a deeper explanation that we need. The, the sense of self that we have is, is rather limited. We have consciousness of self. The ego is that. But there's a sense of self which is higher than that. Let's call that the soul for now. And there's a sense of, of self which is lower than that, which is felt unconsciously perhaps, but we, we feel it. And that's our unconscious connection to lots of things. <laughs> our species, our planet, our cosmos, we're connected um, on, on the deepest level. We were a part of that. That's a part of who we are, our identity. Now, we, we cannot truly say, I am this, unless we include both of those higher and lower aspects of self. And that is the self that creates reality, the three-part self. As we evolve in consciousness, we claim more and more of our unconscious self into consciousness. And we bring down more and more of our soul into conscious awareness. So we become a much more uh, integrated being. And then our choices are much more clearly brought to bear upon the environment and the situations that we have in an effective way. We become more able to, to govern our lives, to get on top of it all. In that context, when we look back at what we thought we were experiencing in the past, we find that actually most of that experience was corrupted by our emotionality. And now that we don't have that emotion, we can look back and say, well, yes, that relationship had to end. Well, yes, it, it was fair that I got sacked from that job and useful because had I not been sacked from that job and finished with this relationship, then I could not have done this. I couldn't have got involved in this situation, which is much more a rich and authentic expression of, of who I am and where I'm going. Life is trial and error. Life itself is trial and error. We see if something works or if we like it, and when we find that we don't like it, we try something else, and so on. That's what the amoeba does. It, it goes in a certain direction, until it's thwarted, and then it changes direction. We're all like that, that's what we're doing. We're just doing this trial and error thing. And this is how we evolve. If we can try to understand that what went wrong in the past was for the benefit of us, it actually suits our longer term purposes for that error to have occurred. If we can take that understanding into the current moment, and understand this also, that what we're doing now is a trial and very likely an error. We don't know how. We don't know in what way what we're doing now is wrong. And that's the reason we're doing it, because we need to find out. We need to make a mistake. We need to do things wrong if we're to learn anything. And, and this is exactly the opposite of what people try and do. People try and get things right, right first time. And, and like, why? Why would they want to do that? I mean, the thing to do is to learn. And you're not going to evolve in consciousness without that. So we want the trial and error life because there's nothing else. And it's the error that actually does us most good. That's what moves us forward in consciousness. So if we can actually let go of this idea that uh, we want to get things right and replace it with the idea that actually, look, I'm getting this wrong. I know I am because I must be. I wonder in what way I'm getting this wrong. What's happening here, the clues that I need so that I can learn how to not make that particular mistake next time. Next time I want to make a different mistake. I don't want to get things right. I just want to make more and more and more mistakes, if at all possible, because I want to evolve in consciousness. And there's no other way than by trial and error.